In fear of the government using antitrust laws against it, AT&T approached the U.S. Department of Justice with the Kingsbury Commitment in 1913. The Kingsbury Commitment promised that AT&T would divest itself of Western Union, stop buying independent telephone companies, and allow independent telephone companies to connect to its lines and switching centers. As a result of the Kingsbury Commitment, AT&T functioned as a regulated, a regulated monopoly from 1913 to 1984. Being a regulated monopoly meant that although AT&T was allowed to provide services without any competitors, it was subject to a great deal of constraints dictated by the government. In 1934, Congress passed the Communications Act of 1934, which established the Federal Communications Commission, FCC, State Public Utilities Commission, PUC, and initial guidelines for the telephone industry. In 1956, AT&T signed a consent decree to resolve its dispute over its foray into the electronic switching and the potential abuses its monopoly power that these developments might lead to. Basically, the Department of Justice forced AT&T to restrict itself to providing telephone service and AT&T was prohibited from branching out into the computer service industry. In return, AT&T could keep its research and manufacturing facilities and maintain its regulated monopoly status for telephone service. In 1982, the Department of Justice ruled that AT&T should be split into multiple smaller companies. It actually occurred in 1984 with what's called the Modified Final Judgment, or MFJ. Some of these new, smaller companies, for example, the seven regional Bell operating companies, or Reeboks, that provided local telephone service would continue to be re regulated monopolies. Others, such as AT&T's Long Distance Division, would be open to competition. These figures illustrate AT&T before and after divestiture. As part of the MFJ, AT&T was forced to divide from the 22 former Bell operating companies that provided local phone service and phone directories. The MFJ created seven regional Bell operating companies, Reeboks. The business that AT&T kept was separated into two divisions. AT&T Technologies, which handled the innovation and production of new technologies, and AT&T Communications, which handled long-distance phone service. The research and development business, formerly Bell Laboratories, became Bell Communications Research, or Bellcore, and was hand and, and which was jointly owned by the new Reeboks. Until the divestiture of AT&T, the distinction between local service and long distance service was not clear. In the MFJ, Judge Harold Green subdivided each Reebok region into local access and telephone areas called LATAS, L-A-T-A-S, LATA, LATAS, roughly equivalent to area codes at that time. Phone service within a specific LATA was known as intra ladder service. Companies that provided local or intra lattice telephone services are known as local exchange carriers or LEX, LECs. According to the MFJ, Rebox had to allow intra ladder providers to access and lease their facilities, including local phone lines and switches. Most importantly, they had to charge each inter ladder provider the same price and, and the provider the same quality of access to its local customers. This concept is known as equal access. In the 1990s, the U.S. government decided that the existence of regulated monopolies in telephone phone service hindered competition. As a result, Congress passed the Telecommunications Act of 1996 
a sweeping piece of legislation that affected competition in local phone service, wireless communications, cable uh, TV, broadcasting, and the Internet. Among other things, the Telecommunications Act of 1996 opened competition for local telephone service and imposed many requirements on LEX to improve smooth and economical interconnection between them and the competitors. The Act codified requirements for the interconnection of all local exchange carriers. These policies included interconnecting with other service providers and not imposing any barriers to interconnection, enabling non-discriminatory resale of the service to competitors, providing number portability or the ability of the telecommunications service users to retain the same telephone numbers without hampering the quality, reliability, or convenience of their phone service, and finally, allowing competitors to access and connect to their facilities. In summary, we have explored in this module Samuel Morse's invention of the telegraph, which consisted of an electromagnet and a hand-operated switch known as a key to ultimately open or close an electrical circuit over a wire, a series of short and long pulses, dots and dashes, that re represented characters known as Morse code. Alexander Graham's Bell invention of the telephone, the single most valuable invention in history, and as telephone exchange, where subscriber lines terminated and operators connected the circuits com to complete a call. We looked at the invention of computers and how they led to the latest advancements in telecommunications. And finally, we discussed the U.S. government's role in legal and policy development during the last hundred years that has directly influenced the telecommunication industry and services as we know them today. Please take quiz three and I'll see you in Module 4, The Public Network.